Please join me in singing the national hymn. The words are printed on the back of your program. God of our fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor. Thy love divine hath led us in the past. In this free land, by thee our lot is cast. Be thou our ruler, guardian, guide, and stay. Please join me in the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Board members, teachers, family, and friends of the graduates, the 2023 graduating class welcomes you to this commencement ceremony. Dublin Christian Academy's motto states, what you are to be, you are now becoming. DCA has been so instrumental in developing us as graduates through shaping us, not just academically, but also spiritually. Dublin Christian Academy has given us a biblical foundation that we can build on as we go through the difficult journeys of life. Everyone here has had an influence on the lives of the graduates, so we thank you for joining us here today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your creative work. We are grateful, Lord, for how you have created hope for us through the salvation in Christ. We are thankful, Lord, for the lives that you have created represented here on this stage. We are thankful for the families that you have given this duty and this task to raise another generation to bring praise and honor to you. We are thankful, Lord, that you have allowed Dublin Christian Academy to partner with these families and to fulfill that task of raising lives that will honor and glorify you. Lord, I pray that you will use this service. Lord, I ask that you would use these testimonies. And Lord, I pray that we would truly reflect the heart that the Holy Spirit can give to us, Lord, through salvation and the hope that we can have in Christ. Lord, I praise you for this opportunity now. Bless the words, bless all that is sung, all that is said. May you be glorified, I ask in your name. Amen. What we are to be, we are now becoming. When I heard that for the first time, as an insecure freshman arriving at a new school, I rolled my eyes and I thought it was just another saying meant to convince me of making good decisions. Now, as I stand here on this stage and I look back at the past four years, I can say with full confidence that not only is that statement true, but it has become personal. What I am to be, I am now becoming. My name is Jade Traffy. 
I grew up in a loving Christian home with my parents and six older siblings. When I began attending DCA, I could never have fathomed the work that the Lord would do in my life. I could never have guessed the friends, mentors, and role models that would be placed in my life to influence me over the next four years. What we are to be, we are now becoming. It is the we that is the community here at DCA. As a class, student body, and a school, we have grown alongside each other and motivated each other to run with endurance the race that is set before us. I will be forever grateful for the community that I found here. It was foundational in fashioning me to be more like the image of Christ. The people around me encouraged godliness, loved me despite my struggles, set the example for change, and didn't allow me to remain as I was. But it was the Lord who prompted that change in me. The we was vital, but it was the I that Christ was transforming. I have grown in every aspect of my life while attending DCA. I have gained the academic knowledge to propel me forward in my education, the social knowledge to be a friend and a witness to those around me, and most importantly, the biblical foundation that has shaped my worldview. I have grown immensely, but I am still becoming who I am going to be. I will always be working towards godliness. Just because I matured greatly in high school does not in any way, shape, or form make me believe I am done maturing. I am starting a new chapter in my life in which I am expecting to mature twofold. If you had told that insecure freshman girl that one day she would be giving the testimony I am, she would have told you she could have never been like the girl standing here. She would have scoffed, mocked, or even rejected that girl. Luckily for that girl, there is a different plan in motion. The creator of the universe had created a master plan of how her life would play out. He was going to show her how much he loved and cherished her. Her heavenly father was going to communicate that she was his child. He would use the people in her life, the places she would go, and the circumstances she found herself to reveal his love and desire for her. She would rejoice in, love, and revere this testimony. She would be changed, but the change would not be because of the we, the people and circumstances around her. The change would not be because of the I, her own self-will. The true heart change was a direct result of him, the God of the Bible. That is my prayer for the new students, those who grew up here, the faculty staff, and those here sitting in front of me. It isn't the we or the I that does the changing, but it is him. What we are to be, we are now becoming. Ever since I was a toddler, like most little boys, I longed for adventure. I would rewatch a shark documentary called Outside the Cage over and over and over again because I couldn't get enough of the thrill of seeing the sharks on screen. I was usually doing something dangerous when I was young with very little or no knowledge of the potential danger and didn't care because the potential reward far outweighed the risk. I wanted there to be action. I wanted to take on a whole army by myself and come out perfectly unscathed. Mostly it was just my dog Baxter and I tramping through the woods together. I dreamed of the day when I would have the craziest story of heroism to live. I began my time at DCA in 2014 entering the fourth grade. I had spent all my education prior to that in the public school system. I had encountered many worldly views and concepts, but did not face any major attacks on my faith. Instead, I made many friends that I still see and have today. However, my parents and I both saw that if I were to continue my education in that environment, it would be difficult for me to grow in my faith, and there was the potential for me to lose my faith altogether. This was a risk neither my parents nor I was willing to take. As I grew, my desire for adventure never changed. However, as all good adventurers know, I needed a good map to guide me. I was soon enrolled in DCA and immediately had a change in my life. I learned much more about how intricate our God was through Bible classes, through every prayer before each class, and through the one-on-one -on -one encouragement of the faculty staff members. DCA has led me 
and helped me back on my feet when I have been discouraged and feeling utterly hopeless. I have been helped to have a consistent relationship with God and with godly friends with whom I can share my faith with. I have seen God prove everything to me from his very existence to his sovereignty and most of all his mercy. I still yearn for adventure, and what I learned in my years growing and learning here was that we all are, advent are adventurers and we all have adventures to live. But we should be seeking the adventure we can live for Christ, through Christ. In the public school, I may have gotten a decent education, but I would have never been exposed to the most important education, which is scripture. The word of God is, as it famously says in Psalm 119, verse 105, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is the blueprint for how we are to live as Christians. It sets the standard for our behavior and our deeds, but it is meant as a map. As someone who always looks for excitement, I see it less as a plan and more as an adventure to live for Christ through him. Thank you to my fellow classmates for going through high school with me, some of you since elementary school, Thank you for lending me over 100,000 pencils, even though I stole every single one of them. <laughs> Thank you to the faculty staff for putting up with my laughing so much in class and my, as it would repeatedly say in my report card, easily distracted attitude. <laughs> I sincerely thank you for the grounded education that you gave me. To my friends, thank you for listening to my horribly timed jokes and complaints. To my sister, Thank you for helping me at home and at school. Sometimes you were a bit of a bully, and I know most of it was out of love and appreciation and preparation for the future. You didn't give up on me, even when I made life exceedingly difficult. Thank you. And finally, to my parents, thank you, Mom, for making sure I stayed on track in all of my day-to-day -day activities. You made sure I got what I needed to get through my days successfully. Thank you for forgiving me and helping me to become more organized, which I know I'm still working on. <laughs> I love you. Dad, you're a role model. You're my role model. You're someone I have looked up to my entire life, and I wanted to be like you. It's been difficult to try to measure up, for sure, because <laughs> um, you've set a very high bar, but you have been helping me achieve my goals uh, and my dreams for the future for many years without any complaint. You've pushed, you've pushed me, and especially when it's been uncomfortable, to become a more well-rounded person and a leader in everything in my life. I love you.
Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Drew. I'm a dorm student who has been in DCA for two years. I was very lucky to live in a Christian family, which both my parents are Christians. I'm the fourth generation who believe in God. My father is a pastor who started our church, which is Winjo Bethany Church, which, which are almost 20 years old. I grew up in church and knowing all the Bible stories from my parents and from the Sunday school teachers. I claim to be saved by him because I went to church every, every week. But lately, I realized that you go to church doesn't mean you are a real Christian. There are many times I think God is giving other people more than me and he is giving less than others. Um, in this two year in DCA, I have changed a lot and grew in physically and spiritually. That's the biggest part of my walk with the Lord. At the Winter Bible Conference, I start to realize I need to talk with other people about the Bible, about my spiritual walk with the Lord. I start to have many questions and about how to be a good Christian that I start to pick up Bible and realize how wonderful it is. I was willing to talk with people about my ideas, about Bible and talking with some teacher and elders to hear their testimony. I become friends with those who love the Bible and who can teach me who can teach me how to become better Christians. And he told me a lot about how to seek the words of the Lord. Also, in Mr. Weekly's biblical discussions become my favorite in economic class. The discussion like how to put, how we need to put God before everything. And what is the Bible told about us about money and how to help the poor made me think through God's words and apply them to life. God has worked on me and to make me a better person and give me more confidence when I'm weak. In Romans, in Romans 10, 11, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. I know that God is working on me and strengthening me. Now I will keep my good spiritual walk with Lord and be a good influence to others when I in the future. My name is Aiden Gillison. Um, first of all, I just want to thank my family for sacrificing so much for me. Um, to come to a Christian school and have that Christian education. And my mom's crying, and now she's going to get me to cry, but we're going to fight through it here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to thank them for being a great role model in my life, for being a Christian foundation, um, my rock that I could always come to. Um, I want to thank my grandparents, my uncles, my aunts, for always being there for me, um, for always being there to talk. Even when I don't pick up the phone, they always do. <laughs> I just want, I'm very thankful for all that they've done in my life. But that's enough about me. Um, as we saw in spring concert, we truly are not, not our own. Um, <laughs> when I gave my life to Christ, I made a commitment to God. This commitment was, in short, me giving my life to him, my everything, my heart, my soul, to God. And, well, I asked him to use me for his glory. I thought it was going to be pretty easy after watching Bob the Tomato talk about it on Veggie Tales. <laughs> but, man, was I in for a surprise. <laughs> Being a Christian and being redeemed by God, it truly is a wonderful thing. When you are redeemed, you are chosen by him. This is made evident in 1 Peter 2.9 where it states, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has taken us out of the darkness of this world which means we no longer belong to the fallen world. It also means that we as believers, we, we won't fit in. This is something that I've struggled to, with greatly in my spiritual walk. I've always wanted to fit in. I want people to like me. Um, that's something that 
I've always struggled with. And I know that if I do follow Jesus' commands, uh, many will despise me. As Jesus states, they hated him before they hated us. I realize now that this is no burden at all, but a, a reward for being a follower of God. We were handpicked out of this fallen, disgusting, wicked world for something better. Dublin Christian Academy has also taught me the importance of having a relationship with God. DCA has showed me the importance of scripture and having that personal devotion with him. It was when I realized that God is my heavenly father and he wants me to have a relationship with him that my whole spiritual walk was transformed. When I first got saved, I did not understand that my God was an interpersonal God. When I realized the truth of God wanting that relationship with me, my whole spiritual walk became vastly different. I became aware of who God is. I became aware of his character. I became aware of his love and his mercy for each and every one of us. I used to be afraid of God and his power. I was shaking like I had just heard, seen the scariest movie after hearing the story of Ananias and Sapphira, how a little white lie in our society can be something so, such a sin to God. But I realized I don't need to be afraid of my Redeemer and my Savior. Romans 5.8 states, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He sent his son to die for us, even though he knew how wicked and terrible we would become. God has given us the ability to have a relationship with him, and now it is on us to pursue that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and helping the class of 2023 to celebrate their graduation. Uh, believe it or not, even though this isn't a r very large class, they have gotten a lot bigger since third grade. There was only two students in this class in third grade, if you can believe it. And uh, they've all joined uh, as the years have gone on, a lot in junior high and then early in high school. Uh, this class has endured much through their high school years, remember that thing called COVID? Uh, that was their freshman year. And uh, they endured all of that with its remote learning and social distancing and masks and whatever else there was. And uh, they've made it on through high school. Uh, as I think back through their years uh, here at DCA, uh, it's been an explosion of technology in our society and uh, here at school too. We uh, between their beginning their freshman year on into their high school year, um, we've added a lot of things like Chromebooks for every student, and uh, they love things like Google Classroom and the Google Sites and all those things they have enjoyed through high school. And uh, hopefully they didn't use AI to write any of their speeches today. <laughs> I won't ask, I won't ask. This is a class that uh, has uh, touched DCA life in a lot of ways. We have uh, dorm students as part of this class, as well as town students. We have domestic students and international students part of this class. They have been heavily involved in the DCA sports and DCA fine arts and debate and student government. And they have contributed much to DCA and we certainly will miss their impact on the student body. Uh, I had them over to my house at the beginning of the year to talk a little bit about this school year. And this class set a goal that they wanted to have a student body that was more open to one another, that really uh, was more willing to be friendly to one another than they had been before. And I feel like this class did a good job in setting that goal and, and attempting to do that. Uh, in fact, uh, as, I, as they get ready to graduate, I, I have a little um, interview with each one of them. And um, one of the things I asked them is, what, is, what was you know, your favorite thing about DCA? And almost to a person, they said their favorite thing about DCA was the community or the, the family atmosphere of DCA. And I think that's something that they have really valued throughout their years here. Uh, so class of 2023. Congratulations. We're so happy that you have made it this far. And we uh, know that there are a lot of you here in the audience today that have really supported them and helped them along the way. 
So I want to take just a minute to uh, thank some of you. Uh, first of all, I'm wondering if the families of these graduates, the parents, the grandparents, siblings, you two, if you could all stand, we'd like to give you uh, a welcome and a thank you today. So parents, family members, grandparents, if you could stand, thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you so much for all of your sacrifice, your support of these students. Uh, siblings, thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for uh, all that you have done to sacrificially uh, support and help these students uh, through their time here at DCA. Uh, I'd like to recognize another group as well um, that have worked tirelessly on behalf of these seniors and all of the students at Dublin Christian Academy, and that is the faculty and staff. If you would please stand, please. <clears throat> thank you for your commitment, faculty and staff. Thank you for your ministry. And uh, I know that you have put many hours into nurturing the hearts of these students, training them to think biblically, and helping them in every facet of life. So it has been a privilege and an honor to work alongside you. Thank you for another good year. I have one particular recognition, though, that we can't let this uh, ceremony go by without mentioning, and that's Mr. Fletcher. Mr. Fletcher is finishing his 25th year at Dublin Christian Academy. Over the, <clears throat> over the years, Mr. Fletcher has served as DCA's science teacher, in all honesty, probably our science department, okay? Uh, and, but most recently, he has stepped in during a very critical time to be the principal of DCA. And I know that our students and faculty and staff appreciate his commitment. Uh, Mr. Fletcher is known by the DCA students as a teacher with a lot of wit, a lot of energy, and a lot of wisdom. So Greg, thank you for investing these 25 years. Why don't you stand? We'd like to give you another round of applause. One more thing I'd like to um, point out to you is that uh, as a ministry, DCA has um, been a beneficiary of many people's faithful lives in so many ways. People who have served our students and our faculty and staff often behind the scenes, but have really been a help to our ministry. And um, we have always had parents, grandparents, friends of DCA who have been desirous of really supporting and helping this ministry, and we're so very thankful. Let me just point out a few ways that uh, you can be a, of help to DCA. Uh, DCA does have an annual fund, and that annual fund exists to uh, help uh, support uh, families who otherwise would not be able to send their children here to DCA. And uh, we have many alumni and friends who give sacrificially to that annual fund. And we're very thankful for that. And uh, with the increased enrollment, uh, we actually have an increased demand for the annual fund and also an increased demand on our facilities. And uh, so it's important that uh, we continue to uh, have that annual fund support and underwrite a lot of what happens around here at DCA. So we appreciate uh, your commitment to that. Let me ask you to encourage students to come to DCA. Uh, you are the ones who know the most about DCA. And uh, you know you can do all kinds of advertising, uh, and uh, we do some of that. Uh, you can get word out. But the, 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 the way most people come to DCA is because someone else has told them about DCA. So I want to ask you, be ambassadors for Dublin Christian Academy. Spread the word and uh, let people know 
Uh, if you know of people within your community, within your church, within your family, uh, that would be a good fit here, then we would love to have you encourage them to be a part of the DCA family. Let me ask you, too, to encourage people to invest their lives in Christian education. Uh, we need faithful people who will come and pour their lives into these young people. So if you know people like that that are ready to serve, ready to uh, give, and uh, ready to really be rewarded by being able to see growth in these lives, then uh, we'd love to have them part of the team here at DCA. Lastly, uh, we really appreciate your prayers for Dublin Christian Academy. DCA exists by the grace of God. And every step we take is a step of faith. So we appreciate your prayers and we covet your prayers. We ask you to continually keep us in prayer that the Lord would allow us to continue to minister to these young people. But once again, thank you so much for being here and uh, celebrating this special day uh, with this class. At this time, I'd like to introduce this year's valedictorian, Abigail Moody. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Isaiah 40, verse 8. In an ever-changing world, the principles of loving God, loving others, and advancing the gospel will never change. You may recognize these three statements as the vision statement here at DCA. As I put together my thoughts about what I wanted to say about my years here, these three statements came to mind. What seemed to me to be simply a vision statement was truly integral to the way things are run. These three principles shape the culture of our school and should be guideposts for our lives outside of Dublin Christian Academy. The first of these guideposts is loving God. DCA has encouraged this principle through things like grow groups, chapels, and Bible classes. God's word is presented to us every day in many different ways. We are encouraged to love God in everything we do. The second of these guideposts is loving others. We have been encouraged to love others through very student body activities, the Big Little program, and sports teams. We have been challenged to reach out to others and to place their needs before our own. The third of these guideposts is advancing the gospel. DCA aims to advance the gospel through ministry team, community outreaches, and the opportunity to be exposed to Christ's church throughout the world. We are challenged and encouraged to spread the gospel to those around us and to be a missionary in our own communities. Whether you realize it or not, all three of these guiding principles influence your time here at DCA. I didn't realize this until the past couple of years. My love for God has grown. I have learned to love God enough to trust that his plan is perfect. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. This was a verse that I memorized in elementary school and one that has stuck with me for a long time and I've come back to it when life just doesn't make sense. My love for others has grown. I have learned to have patience for others even when they aren't the easiest to deal with. I've also been reminded by my classmates that I'm not the easiest person to deal with either. I have grown in my understanding of how important the advance of the gospel is. The Great Commission is found in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. These verses have become very familiar as they have been repeated and taught in many different classes. I have been challenged and encouraged to do just what the Great Commission says, teach the gospel to every nation. Although I didn't realize it until later, throughout all 13 years at DCA, God has grown my love for him, my love for others, and my desire to advance his gospel. To those of you who have encouraged me to love God, love others, and advance the gospel, thank you. To the faculty, staff, and coaches who have mentored me throughout the years, thank you for challenging me mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for your patience and endurance. Thank you for teaching me everything from the basics of reading and writing to the complexities of the human body. As a faculty staff kid, I have gotten an up-close look at everything that happens behind the scenes to make the vision of DCA a reality. Thank you for your daily commitment and sacrifice to this vision. To the various teammates, classmates, and friends I have had over the past 13 years, thank you. 
Thank you for all the laughs and even the hard conversations. Thank you for encouraging me to keep pressing forward even when, mess, when I mess up. I will miss you all dearly. To the nine people sitting behind me, thank you for the inside jokes, the challenging conversations, the reality checks, and all the other memories we have made. Although I've only known some of you for a couple of years, each one of you has had a tremendous impact on my life. From those wonderful junior high years, to remote learning during our freshman year, to planning junior senior, and finally our year of last. I am grateful for all of you, and I will miss each one of you as we go our separate ways. Lastly, to the people who deserve the most pity, the people who live with me and have to put up with my various annoying quirks and mannerisms daily, my family, Enoch. Thank you for the constant laughs, the constant humbling yet humorous remarks, which I'm sure I'll appreciate more when I'm older, <laughs> and for being an example of a true friend. Ethan, thank you for the drives to Duncan, the reminders that even though I'm older, it doesn't mean I'm in charge, <laughs> and for, being truly, for showing me how to be truly caring and compassionate towards others. Enoch and Ethan, I know I'm just your bossy older sister, but I'm always just one call away. Mom, thank you for being my best friend. Thank you for showing me what it means to trust God even when his plan isn't clear. Thank you for encouraging me and always pointing me to Christ. Dad, thank you for showing me what it means to be faithful to God, to your family, and to your church. Thank you for your wisdom in hard situations and your commitment to everything God has called you to. Thank you to both of you for all the sacrifices you make for me and for loving me unconditionally. Class of 2023, my challenge to you is to love God, love others, and advance the gospel wherever you go. This world will not encourage any of these principles. You will not find it easy to hold to these truths, but hold fast to the truth found in Isaiah 40 and verse 8. In an ever-changing world, God's word will remain the same. The first verse of our senior song says, Be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. Your defender is he who is always the same. Mount up with wings as the eagle ascending. Victory is sure when you call on his name. Find your strength in the Lord. Find confidence in the fact that God will never change. Place your trust in him and you will be victorious. God has taught us the power he has shown will make us grow stronger in Christ my cornerstone so let us be faithful steadfast in this one thing to keep our hearts with diligence for Christ our Lord and King Jesus,
our theme for this school year was let's build. And we challenged the young people to be committed to building the body of Christ and be part of the, their local church. Uh, I cannot think of a person who embodies this building of the church uh, more than our speaker today. Uh, Bill Jenkin and his wife Terry joined Continental Baptist Mission as missionary church planners in 1983. And for over 21 years, by his grace, Bill and Terry had the privilege of establishing and nurturing four different churches in the state of Florida, seeing those churches becoming self-sustaining churches, and in some cases, literally helping to build the church building. In 2004, Bill stepped into the administration of Continental Baptist Mission when he accepted the position of vice president, a position which gave him the opportunity to represent the mission and share what God was doing throughout North America and the church planning efforts that were being put forth. And then in May 2006, 2006 Bill accepted the call to become CBM's president, where he served for a number of years. And Bill is now pastoring a church, but he and Terry continue uh, to be on the road for many weeks throughout the year to strengthen and uh, support churches around the country. The DCA family has been blessed in a special way by the Jenkin family. Bill and Terry's son, Cliff, served here on, D on the DCA staff uh, for 10 years. Uh, Jenkin Hall is named after Cliff Jenkin. Cliff was an amazing math teacher. He was a gifted scholar, a loyal friend, and a caring mentor. <coughs> he truly embodied what it was to be a faculty member here at DCA. The Lord took Cliff home in April of 2004, but we certainly will not forget the blessing that he was to the DCA family. Through the time of Cliff's struggle with cancer, we had the blessing of getting to know Bill and Terry. And they have been part of the DCA family ever since, and I am truly honored that he would come today to be our commencement speaker. So please welcome with me Bill Jenkins. Good morning. It is a delight to be here. Congratulations, graduates. Faculty and staff, uh, I heard a teacher say, the students are so glad at the end of the year. They have no idea how happy the teachers are that the year is also over. And that's a, that's a good gratitude. So congratulations. Congratulations, parents. We were privileged to be in an open house in Dillon, Montana, just a week ago, and we graduated. We 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 congratulated the graduating senior, and her mother was right there. And I said, "Congratulations to you." Someone listening said, "Why are you congratulating her?" Evidently, they didn't have a teenager <laughs> in their home, and we're no strangers. We have four children. No strangers to teenagers. We missed having four teenagers in our home at the same time. We missed that by two months. That is, our oldest son turned 20 just before our twins, Cliff and his brother Clint, turned 13. So we've had a house full of teenagers for a lot of years. And they were wonderful years. Well, there was a short period of time when we would have wanted to put our oldest in a box and feed him through a hole, but that didn't last long. There was an even shorter period of time when we would have wanted to plug up the hole. <laughs> so graduates, here you are, ready to go. Adventure, I like the adventure. I still like the adventure. I call myself adventuresome. Some people call me reckless as part of what made us church planters. Our idea of a, of a promotion was leaving a full church, graduation service, beautiful building, and then going and starting another church with just sometimes a handful of people, sometimes no people at all. I love the adventure, and I'm excited to see what God will do with you folks. I can't tell you the future, 
I can't tell you the, the little things, but I can tell you the big picture and the potential. I was preaching in a church in Michigan. It's one of our supporting churches. We are still missionaries. They had a new pastor, and he didn't trust me. I actually heard that. And so instead of giving me the morning service, he put me with all of the kids, kindergarten through high school. So he didn't trust me with the adults, but he put me down there with those children with their impressionable minds. <laughs> And I was teaching on prosperity. I want to talk to you about prosperity today. I was teaching on prosperity and I said, now with all of these kids in there, who can tell me what prosperity is? And they were all quiet except a little kid, a kindergartner. And he's waving his little arms. And how would he know what prosperity is? And I'm looking for one of the older kids to help me out. And this kid comes a little off his seat and just waving his arms, thinking this guy must not be able to see me. And I thought, well, I'll find something good. Regardless of what he says, I'll find something good. And unless, of course, he would say that Jonah built a big ark. Then it's hard to find something about that. But I'll find something good. I said, okay, tell me what prosperity is. And the little man spoke. He said something, almost, almost exactly these words, prosperity is knowing God. Knowing what God wants you to do and doing it. I said, wow. And so prosperity for you. To know God, you say, well, we already do. We've received Christ as our Savior. The Apostle Paul was probably saved for more than 20 years when he said in Philippians to those people at Philippi that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He's not saying that I may get saved. He knew him in that salvation sense, but his goal, part of his aspirations were to get to know God better. That's what I wish for you, to get to know God better. And I've seen wonderful things. We've been exposed. Our, our oldest son is 50 years old. I'm an old guy. And we've been involved in Christian education for a lot of years. And I'm excited in the potential. And I've seen wonderful things as students have gone on from Christian schools and drawn closer to Jesus Christ, getting to know him better. And then I see some with this day of the media, the social media, some who, some who were leaders spiritually in their classes and have gone on to raise children and now even sometimes grandchildren and no evidence at all that they follow Jesus Christ. In fact, evidence contrary to that. And I think, how sad and in preparation to come here, I thought, what could I say that might stick with you? I, I've had graduation services before. I've asked people before, what did they say at your graduation? And most people cannot tell. I want to bring you greetings from an old man. Not me. You thought I meant me. Psalm 37, verse 25. Verse 25. Think of the magnitude of this. Maybe he was stroking his beard. We know he was old because he said so. Psalm 37 verse 25 says, I have been young. Do you almost see him just thinking things through? I have been young. And now I'm old. And I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And so this old fella says, I look it over, I evaluate people, I know God, we know he knew God, we know he was growing in his relationship. It was David. What's the bottom line? What do you see? I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. 
And I want to encourage you as you go on to live prosperous lives, that is, knowing God, and getting to know him better, knowing what God wants you to do, and he'll reveal that, and then doing it. Wow, that's some adventure. I remember when I was feeling called to the ministry, we were in the church in First Baptist Church in Moses Lake, Washington, and God was tugging at my heart to go into the ministry, and I called my pastor back in Montana. They, too, were missionaries with Continental Baptist Mission starting Flint Creek Baptist Church in Phillipsburg, and I called my pastor, and I said, I think God is calling me to go into the ministry. And he said, well, I've already concluded that. And I said, but I want to go so much. This was how little I knew. I want to go so much that, that it can't be God's will. See, I had some kind of warped idea of God's will that he's going to take a young, healthy logger and somehow maybe break my legs and put me on a corner begging and selling pencils or something. I don't know. And Pastor Faust said to me, from this same verse in which we see the old man perhaps stroking his beard, saying, I've not seen the righteous forsaken. He said, well, Bill, you do know that the Bible says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, so there's, there's the pinnacle, delight yourself in the Lord. He said, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Way before the time of cell phones, I was standing in the kitchen. I remember doing this. What? The Bible says, I'd only been saved for a few years and wasted, wasted, sadly, some of those years. The Bible says what? The Bible says if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I've heard well-meaning preachers say, now, 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 that doesn't mean God will give you whatever you want. They're wrong. The first part of the verse is important. The verse doesn't say just whatever you want, God will do it. But it does say if you delight yourself in the Lord. Because if you delight yourself in the Lord, graduates, delight yourself in the Lord, here's what will happen. It's exciting. Because this is a personal relationship we have with Jesus Christ. He wants you to do his will even more than, even, even more than your parents. And that's a lot. And if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will recalibrate your want to. So you begin to want the very things that he wants for you. It's What kind of a relationship is this that God would do such a wonderful thing? And so I think of prosperity. I think of Mark chapter 8, verse 36. It says, what does it profit a man? We think of this in terms of salvation, and well, we ought to, but, but for believers too. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Well, the believer's not going to lose his soul, but the idea there, you understand. He's saying you can waste your life chasing after the wrong stuff. John chapter 13, verse 17 says, If you know these things, so it's important that you continue to know these things. Continue to grow. Continue to learn. Continue to be a student of the word of God. He says, if you know these things, that's commendable. But then he says, happy are ye if you do them. And so combining some words for our purpose today, we have prosperity. We have happiness. Satisfaction. I want to tell you, this authentic Christianity, it is satisfying. Blessing, being fulfilled, to pursue that. To pursue getting to know God better. Now, not pursuing as our main goal. I, I want to pursue prosperity as my main Don't do that. Think of Solomon. You find all this in the first two verses of Ecclesiastes. Think of this guy. He had everything at his disposal to do whatever he wanted to do, including getting to know God better. But he went a different way. 
think of what you can do and don't think too much about it, but with all the money, all the opportunities, all the power, the influence, and his main pursuit. Now, this may seem contradictory. It's not. We'll wrap it up. But his main pursuit was to be satisfied. Our main pursuit should be to get to know God better. And then we'll have satisfaction. There is a difference. And in his pursuit of satisfaction, he went after education. And he says in chapter 1, education doesn't satisfy. I, nothing wrong with education. We're in favor. One of our twins, Clifford's brother, got his Ph.D. when he was 26 years old. Nothing wrong with education, but if that's your pursuit... Education does not satisfy pleasure. Solomon went after that. Pleasure does not satisfy. Achievement does not satisfy. We learn in chapter 2. There again, you find all these in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and 2. Wealth, I'll get enough money and then I'll be satisfied. I'm pretty free to talk about this. I made my living as a millwright and a good living. When we went into the ministry in 1983, we were making $38,000 a year that year before. The first year in the ministry, we made $16,000. $22,000 cut in pay. If God wanted us to do it, we just did it. We never went without. It probably took us... I don't know, Terry would be able to answer, but it probably took us 25 years to get back up to some $30,000. It didn't matter. God, God met all of our needs. Wealth does not satisfy. And then even success, pointedly success in chapter 2, verses 9 and 11. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, he said, that doesn't satisfy either. Education, pleasure, achievement, wealth, success in itself, it doesn't satisfy. In fact, he concluded his life, and his thoughts in chapter 2, verse 17. He says, therefore, I hated life. A man with all this potential, primarily the potential to know God. I hated life. So where do we go? Well, we go to the Lord Jesus Christ. What, what would he say to us in regard to our pursuit? We've already learned from the Apostle Paul, that we need to know him, get to know him better. But in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 3, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, I'll just suggest to you a natural connection there. The poor in spirit know their need is to know God. And so the first thing that I would share with you would be to make sure that you get to know God even better. Learn, grow. Secondly, trust God when you're disappointed. Life has its disappointments. Our son died on this campus. Planted the tree out front. Is it still there? It says when that tree prospers and grows, think of your son Cliff and his influence in the lives of others as they prosper and grow. And I said to myself, and if the tree dies, forget that. I'm glad he didn't die. We know something about disappointment. And yet God is a sovereign God. Those were good years. Those years of our son's cancer, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the kind of, of joy that you jump up and down and you're just so excited all the time. Let me tell you the last joke I heard. Not that. But trusting God, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Thirdly, expect God to meet your needs. Blessed are the meek. I haven't planned on mentioning Cliff very much, but I saw Leon Moody. I, I didn't know him. We met, and we were in Florida, and he said, I've talked to your son. I'm recruiting your son. And he said, we don't pay much. He actually said that. We don't pay much. Someone said to Cliff, I'm surprised you'd go so far from Florida to New Hampshire, I'm surprised you go so far for so little. And Cliff said, our parents, my parents taught me not to ask how much or how far. 
Don't ask how much or how far. As you get to know God, do what God wants you to do. It's part of prosperity. Follow God's instructions in verse 6 of that Matthew 5 passage. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. God says they shall be filled. Ask God to help you know and understand how to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And while there may be some components to that, the main one will be your familiarity and your tenacity of being in the word of God. Be in the word of God when you feel like it. Isn't that exciting? Wow, I get up in the morning and I want to get in the word. But get in the word of God when you don't feel like it. And be honest with God. Dear Lord, I'm sorry I don't feel like being in your word today. But I'm going to do it. It's the right thing to do. Help me to learn, dear Lord. Help me to grow. Help me to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Cultivate a forgiving heart. People will cross you. Verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Maintain a clear conscience. Blessed are the pure in heart. A clear conscience, for they shall see God. Build healthy relationships. As you endeavor by God's grace to reach a lost and dying world, have unsaved friends. We see many people come to Christ. And when a person comes to Christ, our advice to them is not get rid of all your, old save, your unsaved friends. That's a mission field. In one of the churches we started, we saw a neighbor and his wife come to Christ. Saw their son, adult son, come to Christ. Saw a brother and his wife come to Christ. Saw cousins come to Christ. What a mission field. Now the rule of thumb is with your unsaved friends, make sure that you are contributing the leadership qualities of the relationship. Make sure that they're coming your direction, not that you're going their direction. If, if it's too strong going their direction, that's when it's time to get new friends. But build healthy relationships. And then the last thing is live with an eternal perspective. Verse 10 of that passage says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There's our sight. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you for my sake. So our focus there is an eternal focus. If you have a focus of a hundred years, you'll be disappointed. I'll be frank with you. If I had a focus of a hundred years, it's not fair that our son died at 31. God is not fair. But if we have a focus, it'd be fair if you died at 70. I'm 69. That doesn't sound very attractive either. <laughs> but if I, if I take and I, I draw a timeline from that corner to that corner and make that a timeline of 100 years, Cliff died at 31. 70's over here. That doesn't seem fair. But if I take that same timeline and just try, we can't imagine it, but take that same timeline and make it a timeline of eternity from there to there. Now I go back and I mark 31 years. Where is it? Well, it's, it's right in that corner. And then I mark 70 years. Where is that? It's so close to the 31 years that without a magnifying glass, I can't see the difference. If we have an eternal perspective, then we say, God is good. God is good. So the bottom line, what advice do you get from this old man, a logger from Montana? I have been young, and now I'm old, and I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will 
adjust your want to. I don't know what version that would be, Mr. Eric, but, but, but it's true. Delight yourself in the Lord, and then what? He'll recalibrate your want to, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, don't hear me say pursue satisfaction. Pursue obedience to God. And then as a byproduct, God will bring you a satisfying life. Pursue a relationship with God, ongoing, through the Word of God primarily. And you can live a prosperous life from his perspective. Clifford was fond of saying, life is choices. Choices have consequences. Class, watch out for the little things, the so-called little things. That doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Watch out for the little things, particularly the so-called little sins. It matters. Watch out for ordinary days. We get to travel around the country. I'll be sharing tomorrow here, preaching in this church. We've seen a bunch of men come to Christ in the last months. Guys that can't even find, couldn't find the book of John. We're discipling them. Boy, it's exciting to talk about that stuff. What an exciting life and filled with adventure. Ha! Most of my days are ordinary days when nothing spectacular happens and you need to be faithful to God. Dear graduates, in the ordinary days, when nothing spectacular is going on, just do what God wants you to do. Life is choices. Choices have consequences. So make the right choices. God will help you to do so. Our Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for these graduates. We thank you for the families. We thank you for the input, huge input, of Dublin Christian Academy in their lives and the individuals that do that. Thank you. Dear Father, we pray for these students. Help them, dear Lord, to make right choices. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We now would like to honor our, several of our students with some specific awards. And the first award I'd like to honor would be the award for valedictorian, and that would be Abigail Moody. And salutatorian, Jade Traffy. And we have a award for the honors award for the grades nine through twelve, and this is the senior who this is excuse me the highest GPA in the school for 2023, and that would be Abigail Moody. Now our fine arts awards. We have seniors who have displayed outstanding ability in speech, music, or art. We have three students this year. We have Abigail Moody, Jade Traffy, and Elijah Johnson. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Love that bell. Congratulations. And our athletic award, a lady and gentleman who've displayed athletic ability, leadership, sportsmanship, and have been a team player in the DCA athletic program, Jenny Drew and Aiden Gillison.
and our Christian Service Award. Seniors who have rendered outstanding service to the school, provided leadership ability, displayed spiritual maturity and willingness to serve both publicly and many times behind the scenes, Abigail Moody and Dana Mayhew. Congratulations again. At this time, I'd like to recognize the senior class president. He has something to share. Dublin Christian Academy has given us so much as graduates, and well, we want to give back. We are proud to contribute funds toward the construction of the new signs of DCA. This is our class's way of showing appreciation for the school and all that it has done for us. As this chapter of our lives comes to an end, we are thankful for the biblical knowledge that this school has provided for the next chapter of our lives. Thank you for joining us here today on the end of this chapter. Thank you. This time I'd like to read about two scholarships that we like to present. The first is the Emily Tootin Scholarship. Emily Tootin was a boarding student from Florida who graduated from Dublin Christian Academy in 1996. Although she attended DCA for only two years, her participation and influence were a significant contribution to both students and staff. Everyone loved and appreciated Emily and expected a great future for her in God's service. Unexpectedly, her life ended in a tra tragic automobile accident, accident approximately one month after graduation. Through a trust fund established in Emily's name, two $1,000 scholarships are awarded each year to returning students who demonstrate in their lives the potential to honor the Lord and the example and legacy of Emily Tootin. This year's recipients are Harold Doremus and William Brown. <laughs> the next is the Webb Jenkins Scholarship. This scholarship is funded in honor of Kathleen Webb and Clifford Jenkin, who both care deeply about the students of Dublin Christian Academy. Kathleen Webb worked at DCA from 1995 to 2007. She was the receptionist, taught third and fourth grade, and tutored many students. Students remembered her as tough but caring. During her five-year struggle with cancer, Mrs. Webb was an example to all of cheerfulness and strength. She encouraged many to look beyond their circumstances to the God who is in control of our lives. Clifford Jenkin taught mathematics at DCA from 2001 to 2011. His sense of humor and his kindness drew many students to him and his ability to make math fun surprised and delighted his classes. Mr. Jenkin was a dedicated professional who also invested in his students' lives outside the classroom. His trust in God's faithfulness and loving kindness inspired those who observed his long battle with cancer. Mr. Jenkin never resisted God's work in his life, and he spent his life for things of eternal value. With joy, we can say that Kathleen Webb and Clifford Jenkin fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. And in the future, there is laid up for them a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to them on that day, and not only to them, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This year's recipient of a $1,750 Webb Jenkins Scholarship is Gabrielle Russell. <laughs> In 
And now, will the class of 2023 please rise to receive their diplomas? Jenny Moran Ju. Congratulations. Dana Leon Mayhew. Abigail Elise Moody. Austin T. Armstrong. Congratulations. Elizabeth Huanxin Liu. Aiden Christopher Gillison. Congratulations. Jade Luray Traffy. Congratulations. Elijah Carl Johnson. <laughs> Congratulations. Esther Gua. Congratulations. Clayton Michael French. Congratulations. It is my privilege to present to you the class of 2023. I'd like to personally congratulate the class of 2023 on this important goal accomplished. And on behalf of the dedicated faculty and staff of Dublin Christian Academy, I'm going to leave you with your final assignment. The assignment that we trust your time here at DCA has equipped you to pursue. Love God, love others, and live your life to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please stand with me as we sing our closing hymn, May the Mind of Christ My Savior. <clears throat> May the mind of Christ my Savior live in me from day to day.
again, thank you for being here today. I trust that you will join us for our reception. Uh, if you go down the road and you'll see two red buildings going between the two around back, and uh, that's where we'll have the receiving line in Jenkin Hall. And then the staff has prepared a wonderful lunch for all of you, so I hope that you'll stay around and congratulate the young people and enjoy a time of fellowship together. And now by the authority vested in me by the state of New Hampshire and the board of directors of Dublin Christian Academy on this third day of June in the year of our Lord 2023, I declare this 59th year of Dublin Christian Academy officially over to God be the glory. Thank you.